travel troubles continue for passengers at airports across the country this morning. There Some travelers at SFO say driving to Ohio is a better option than flying. Others say they've been waiting to catch a flight for more than 24 hours. Despite $54 billion in federal pandemic support handed over to the nation's airline to keep their people working, the airlines offered buyouts and early retirements. Welcome to Common Sense TV. I'm your host. Doctor of Common Sense, I got something I want to say about United Airlines. I will never, ever fly United Airlines again. I think it was better before they merged with Continental. Continental was better. United Airlines is trash, and they're liars too. But this is what really happens, because I'm going to talk about United, but this is one of the problems where it happens when you are so obsessed with diversity because who's the tra who's the transportation secretary you got it as joe biden would say thank you secretary booty juice thank you secretary booty juice thank you all for being here please thank you secretary booty juice thank you all for being here. secretary booty juice ever since he's been in charge it's been a catastrophe because you wanted diversity. It was bragging about he's the first gay transportation person. What has he done? Nothing. Why wouldn't he? At first, they were blaming on COVID. Now they're not blaming it on COVID. Now, not all of this is uh, Secretary Buttigieg's fault because the CEO of United, while everybody else was stranded trying to catch flights, he caught a private flight and said, screw you. United Airlines is apologizing to customers and his own employees. Scott Kirby took a private jet from New Jersey to Colorado this week when his airline was canceling thousands of flights. He says he regrets that his actions distracted the professionalism of United employees. So I was trying to catch a flight <clears throat> out of um, Intercontinental Airport, Bush Airport in Houston, Texas. Booked up for United, and I knew something was suspicious when I showed up at the gate, and the gate still says, I can't remember if it was Alberta, some part of Canada. And it was saying this flight hadn't left yet. Now, I did get there about an hour and a half early, maybe two hours, but I mean, that plane should have been gone by then. So I started thinking to myself, I started thinking, hmm, this is probably going to be a problem. So... The, the, I asked one of the la the ladies and a man who they were they were going to Canada. I says, uh, "Have they canceled your flight or something? You going to Canada?" And they both says, "No. We wish they would cancel the flight. They've been delaying this, delaying this. They said for about seven, eight hours. Then they lied and tried to blame it on the weather. Now I knew they was lying when they said something about the weather when they started delaying my flight." Because leaving Houston, going to Florida, was not delayed. I mean, it was not a weather problem. There was no bad weather, either one of those. But this is what got me bad, what got me about United. Not only did United delay the flight, delay the flight, and then they canceled. By the time they canceled my flight, it was 10 o'clock at night. Have you ever tried to get another flight at 10 o'clock at night? So now I'm really aggravated. Everybody else in the airport is aggravated. So they said, you need to go up to customer service. I can't remember what floor is on. Went to customer service, and the freaking line was about three, four miles long. I'm not even exaggerating. Three, four miles long. So I got the line. I said, I don't want to wait on that. Get my damn luggage. So I went and says, talked to one of the, uh, the folks, caught one of these United workers. I says, uh, can I get my luggage? And she told me that we're not unloading any luggage tonight. Why in the hell did you load my luggage on the damn plane if you weren't planning on unloading? The plane ain't going nowhere. Now I can have my luggage. I said, I'm trying to catch another flight. I need my luggage. Sir, we're sorry. And they told everybody, you won't even get your damn luggage back. This is what they told me. You will not get your damn luggage back tonight. Nobody. Thousands of people. 500 uh, flights was canceled at Denver. You with United. 
And if you're telling me it was weather, why didn't all the other airlines have weather problems? Some other airlines, I think Southwest may have canceled 12 flights. Nobody even came close to United while the CEO is catching a private jet. And they were lying because I asked one of the employees off the record, are y'all having some kind of strike? And she says, they didn't tell us, but I think they, some of the pilots may be striking. Will it have something to do with you guys laying off and making these other pilots retire early because you wanted them to take the damn jab? And then you had to deal with the, the concept of um, these folks lying to you about what they were actually doing because then they say you can call on the phone. They would tell you your wait time is three hours, four hours. Then somebody would pick up the phone after three hours. Finally, you just on hold. You're over doing every kind of thing. They'll pick up the phone and says, I'm sorry. You've called the wrong number. I said, this is the number they gave me. They said, no, you need to talk to Baggett. I can just go downstairs and talk to Baggett. So we went downstairs and talked to Baggett. And they said, I'm sorry, Mr. Williams, but um, we're not giving, we're not unloading any passengers' bags that was loaded on them. People are missing big things, graduations, um, funerals, things like that. It's just, it's just heartbreaking. We met Bianca Taylor, who's relocating to the South Bay at the United Airlines baggage claim. It took me about an hour and a half to get my luggage, two hours to stand in line to get a hotel voucher. Then I had to stay in a hotel in Atlanta, like a comfort inn in Atlanta, um, for another day. And then they delayed my flight again today. They canceled it ra randomly with no reason, no warning. They booked me for the following day. And they couldn't even give me a direct flight originally. I had to go all the way to San Diego and then catch a connecting flight to oh, here. Yeah. You knew you were not going to take a flight. Now you didn't mix it up every day with damn bags. You don't even know where you're at. So I'm aggravated now. I said, I need my damn luggage. And what made it even worse is that and I normally don't do this. I had put my keys in my luggage. And so now, even if I want to leave my luggage, I can't go in my vehicle. So now I'm thinking, I'm really aggravated. Now, everybody aggravated. The whole airport is aggravated. So I tried to get a flight on any other airlines. No other airlines had flights. So I had another option. Either I can drive, but it's late at night. They told me earlier I could have drove and got there. It took me a little while, but I could have drove and got there. But I said, now I think I'm going to have to go to another airport. So I started thinking about Hobby Airport. Got a, they call it Red Eye over at Hobby. So they lost my luggage. They ain't got no damn luggage now. I told my daughter, would you bring me my extra key to my vehicle? Because I'm going to drive over. She said, where's your luggage? They, they don't know where the hell the luggage at. What are you going to do about it? I can't do it anybody. I got to get somewhere though. My daughter comes, she gives me my key, she drops me off where my vehicle's at. I get in my vehicle, leave, get over to Hobby. I'm having a very, very bad 4th of July trying to catch a flight. Get over to Hobby, got my ticket, bought it online. Uh, and then when I get over to the, the Hobby Airport, actually, Angela got it for me. She says that, she says that, let me go online and see can I get it. She was able to find I couldn't get nobody to do it. She she went online for me and, and got the ticket. And so I went over to Hobby. When I get there, it's about, I don't know, 1 a.m. in the morning. I've been at the airport since about 3, 4 o'clock in the evening. So I'm aggravated now. And uh, But I didn't act a fool. You know, I couldn't act. I didn't act a fool. It ain't going to do me no good. You see me on TV. Look at that fool. And so I get there, and I'm trying to go over here and park. I'm just going to sleep at the airport. I ain't got the time. My flight leaves at 5, I think 5.15. And it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. So I get there and I try to get in. And then Shanique was the security guard. She won't even let me in the garage. You know what she told me? You cannot check in this early at the airport. Now I'm really aggravated. I said, what you mean I can't check in? I just want to park. She said, no, 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 no. They don't allow us to let anybody come in. For I said, Bush, you can come in. She said, this is not Bush. She got smart with me. She said, this is not Bush. Oh, no shit, Sherlock. I thought this was Bush. Of course it's not Bush. I know it's not Bush. You mean to tell me I can't park my car before what I got to wait like the 2 a.m., 3 to the morning? She said, I don't know. It's got to be a little bit close. I said, you can't give me a exact time? So then I started thinking because uh, I'm getting aggravated now.
So I said, I'm going to go to a parking spot and get one of these shuttle buses. So they'll let you park over there and I'll just drop and let them drop, drop me off. So I had to do that. So by the end, it's about two. I still got three hours. So I went over and got on the bench and I went, I tried to get to sleep. Then this crazy dude in the airport is screaming and hollering for, I don't know what he was screaming and hollering for. I'm so aggravated. I don't know what he wanted to punch him in the mouth. That's what I wanted to do. So they finally come over there and says that he likes to come up to the airport and watch the plane. Are you serious? He's not even catching a flight? I thought you couldn't act like that in the airport. So finally, I dozed off for maybe, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. Woke up. Dozed. I woke up. It's about, I don't know, 3.30. What I said, I'm going to try to check in. I'm trying to get my ticket now. So I went over. Was able to get my ticket. Now, I don't know where all these people came from because now there's a bunch of people in here. Where the hell they come from? It's 3 a.m. in the morning. Get my ticket. Get on the plane. And then they got this. You know, I don't mind people, kids crying if they were small kid. But this was like a four-year-old, five-year-old that was spall rotten. I, I almost just wanted to reach back there and say, would you shut that noise up, boy? Be quiet with all that noise, man. They got no sleep. I'm having a bad day. But I let it go. Being the saint that I am, I let it go. I didn't want to cause a scene. I just let it go. Finally, the little boy shut up and went to sleep. And then you try to tell you nothing. Now I got to find my, my, my luggage, right? Mm -mm. I'm on hold the whole time. You put your phone down three, four hours, you on hold. Then they'll hang up on you sometimes. So finally, I got somebody on the phone. You know what they tell me? We don't know where your bag's at. Hold on a minute. You book my, I booked my flight. You say you put on the airline. Either they took it off the airline or you lying about taking it off the airline. You just put it in a corner somewhere. Do you know they couldn't find my damn bag? Not only did they not find my bag, they couldn't find a whole bunch of other people's bags. So I'm saying to myself, maybe the Lord is trying to protect me. The plane was going to crash. So I'm just, I'm trying to be positive. Maybe the plane's going to crash. I don't know. Then I start thinking about Secretary Booty Juice. Secretary Booty Juice reason we have a lot of these problems, oh, it's got something to do with United, don't get me wrong. It's got something to do with the them, that, uh, them forcing people to take the jab. It's got something to do with United Airlines system. Listen, I will never fly United again. I might as well have went over to Spirit. Snoop Doggy Dog may have been driving the plane over his Spirit. Might as well went over there because the way United was running this, and nobody knew nothing. You couldn't tell. Anybody you asked, they didn't know nothing. They're telling us nothing. Are you serious? You're losing people luggage and you don't even have a clue. And so I get to Florida and I'm saying, where's my damn luggage? After three days, they finally told me my luggage is at the Florida airport. So now I'm shocked because I was going to get my, one of my kids to go pick it up from Houston and just take it to the house. But they didn't flew it. I said, I didn't catch, I didn't even fly with you guys. Why would you fly my plane, fly my luggage without me even booking a flight with you? What if I was still in Houston? Car driving Sorry. to Ohio. You're driving to Ohio? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because we will get there the same time as if we tried to get an airline flight. So I had to go buy everything, new underwear, everything. I don't have no clothes, nothing. Everything. So hey, I want to get a reimbursement from United. I don't want just reimbursement on my tickets. I don't want just a reimbursement on the car. I want a reimbursement on every freaking thing. Everything I bought. I'm a trash United until you re re reimburse me for everything I bought. Charger for my freaking phone. Everything you name. Toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant. Everything. And they didn't have no remorse about it. So I finally get over to the airport, went down to baggage. They said, oh, yeah, we got Houston stuff over here. Just line up baggage and stuff. I said, no, you know, let me look. I can find mine real quick. I know how mine look. So the guy took me back over there and let me find my suitcase. I said, that's me right there. Now, who can I talk to about that refund? We can start that process right now. Well, this is not the department for refunds. Aren't you the baggage who lost my stuff? Yeah, but you got to go up to the other floor for customer service. It's one of the worst flights I've ever had.
Nobody knows anything in United. This is what I'm talking about, about customer service. Stop calling it customer service because you're not serving the damn customer. But I bet you there's a bunch of incompetent people who's not qualified to be working there because they don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. And to top that off, Secretary Booty Juice, who shouldn't have had the job in the first place, what is his qualification for being a transportation secretary? Please do tell you. What qualifications does he have with transportation secretary? No man married to a man does not get it. Adopted some kids trying to play mommy and daddy with a man does not get it. What qualification does he have to be the transportation secretary? Because when the other fella that y'all hate so much, when Sir Trump was in there, we weren't having all these airlines. I flew there in too. When they having all these problems with the damn airline, all they do is cause problems. And you keep telling me how wonderful diversity is, inclusion is. It's trash. And this proves it to me. First hand, it proves it to me. Nobody knew what the hell they were doing. Nobody knew how to solve the problem. Nobody knew what the problem really was. Everybody's like, FAA is blaming this. Uh, we're blaming the transportation sector. It's United. The system is that the weather. They, I got five different lives from five different people. It was the weather. It was the FAA. It was the shortage of uh, a crew. Every lie you can come up with, they told a different lie. And then one of them said, we believe they may be striking. Well, really? Y'all didn't know that? Y'all didn't cancel the flights earlier? That way everybody could have made preparations. No, they didn't want to do that. They wanted to torture us by telling us we were booked when they know damn well we weren't booked. So I will never fly United again. I don't care if you gave me free stuff, I wouldn't fly. If you charter me a jet now, I might fly on that one. If you want to charter me one, just think. I'm going to keep trashing you now. You're going to give me everything you owe me. I'm going to keep trashing you. I can understand people making mistakes, but they were just fly lineups. They knew that flight was going to be canceled in the first place, but they kept delaying it. And then it just says, they waited almost, what, nine or so. The flight's coming. You, you, you knew that three hours ago. What the hell is wrong with y'all people, man? I have no respect. People were sleeping at the airport. I was, we were talking to all kinds of people. We were almost going to start a union there. Rejected uh, United Workers. I'm talking to everybody. I'm just, what, what's your, what, what, where you was going? One lady said, we, they lost our, fly, our, our luggage is in Ohio. I said, you in Houston. You mean your luggage is in Ohio? Yeah, they don't know where it's at. This is all United, too. If you had saw that freaking line, and then they opened up a couple more lines. Those were, people were going ballistics in there. And I said, I found some people. I said, I said I'm just gonna leave my luggage, and uh, I find it later, cause I gotta get. I needed to get to Florida, and so everybody else was sitting around talking. About, one lady said they was gonna rent the car and just drive to Ohio. I said, Wow, it's a long drive. They were telling some people it'll be three days before your flight. Two days, cause I won't wait no longer. I'm very impatient. So tell what I'm gonna do. I found my luggage later, but I get out of here because I'm going to get aggravated from it. I said, I just felt my temperature rising. So it's time for me. I'm ready to go. I had to get out of there. And so I drove over there and I just said, they, it was a bad experience. Incompetent. United Airlines is incompetent. Pete Booty Juice is incompetent. The workers working at United is incompetent. Every damn thing about them. And I even asked the person, I said, why did y'all ship my luggage without me booking with y'all again? How the hell y'all know what I was doing? Maybe I canceled my flight. Well, that's just standard procedure. That's a dumb procedure. Nobody, you has, you don't have me on your manifest that I got on there, but you just put my luggage on there. The hell is wrong with you people, man? What's wrong with me? Took me three days to find where my luggage was at. They couldn't even find it. And that's holding all together. I probably held on the phone for your name. I probably held on the phone. I don't know about twenty-seven hours or so all together. Because it kept just holding on. One time, I didn't have my charger for another airport. My phone died. Had to go get me a charger. Had to go buy a charger. And um, got back on for three hour hold. It's the wrong department. This is absurd. United runs a very, very crappy system. And your employees don't give a damn. And that's including the CEO. He wouldn't call himself a private plane while the rest of us peasants were suffering. 